Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a found footage zombie film, Diary of the Dead. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a video that was downloaded a few days ago. It shows a reporter covering the news of a man who killed his wife and child before shooting himself. As the crew covers this news, the dead wife suddenly comes back to life and turns into a zombie. She bites a cop and kills him on the live feed. Chaos ensues as the dead murderer also turns into a zombie and attacks another cop. The surviving officers shoot at the zombies, but they continue attacking the people. After some trial, the officers learn that the zombies can only be killed by a headshot, but it's too late for the reporter as she is also killed by a zombie. Now, a narration tells us that the video we are about to see has been uploaded by a cameraman named Jason, who wants the world to know the real truth behind the zombie apocalypse. The footage begins with the shot of a woman named Blondie running away from Mummy. She falls down and is about to get caught by the mummy, but it turns out that this is a movie being shot by Jason as part of a college project. Jason tells the mummy that he's not supposed to catch Blondie so early. Blondie complains that the script requires her to fall down and reveal her body on camera, but the mummy says he's looking forward to seeing her naked body. Jason tries his best to make this a good horror film, but none of his other friends agree with his methods, not even his professor. As the movie begins to fall apart, the teen learns about the recent zombie attacks on the news. The makeup man named Stud doesn't believe the news, but the others say that these attacks are happening too frequently for it to be a fake broadcast. Suddenly, the team hears some scary sounds, and the mummy decides that this is too much for him to handle. So he decides to go back to the giant mansion and invites others to join him. One of the girls decides to go with him, and they take off in his sports car, heading to their mummy hormone section. The rest of the team tries to figure out what to do next, but Jason figures that he should go to the women's dorm, so that he can check up on his girlfriend, Deb. Jason enters the dorm, but finds it completely empty without anyone in sight. He hears a weird sound and checks it out, but gets jump-scared by an old man who is stealing a bunch of stuff. The old man accuses Jason of being a creep because he has a camera in the girl's dorm. The old man walks away, and then Jason goes to Deb's room to see if she is alright. Deb gets frightened when he enters the room and almost attacks him as she thinks he is a zombie. The two finally hug each other, but without a kiss. She's worried about the whole zombie apocalypse and tries to call her family, but nobody answers the phone. As Jason watches the news, Deb starts to panic even further, saying that she wants to go home to make her smelly dumplings. Jason decides to unite everyone in his team and gets them together so that they can stick together. The team gets into a van and makes their way to Deb's home. Jason records all his friends, even though they don't see the point of his actions. He says he's doing this to keep an historical record and starts asking some basic questions to his friends. Deb gets pissed off when Jason asks her silly questions, and then Stud says that this is all a pointless exercise. Jason talks to the driver about what she's thinking, but she says that she doesn't want him to record her. Now, the team checks the news, where a couple of panelists are talking about the unknown zombie virus. They seem to think that this is a terrorist attack from a foreign country, and try to find a logical reason behind it. Jason isn't interested in any of this, so he goes back to interviewing his friends. Blondie, her boyfriend Romeo, and a geek named Nerd make their introductions, and even the professor talks a little about himself. Suddenly, the team comes across a broken-down truck and finds a burned sheriff zombie coming to attack them. There's a brief moment of panic when the zombie tries to break into the van, but the driver manages to kill the zombie by driving the van on top of it. As she drives further ahead, she kills a few more zombies on the road. However, Stud thinks that she's killed living human beings instead of dead zombies. The team decides to take a break for now, but the driver is too shaken up by what has happened. She walks out of the truck to get some fresh air, and the team decides to follow after her. Unfortunately, the driver had a gun all along, and she shoots herself in the face, thus shocking everyone. After checking her pulse, the team learns that the driver is still alive, so they rush her to a nearby hospital. It's of no use though, as the whole place appears to be empty and abandoned. The team hears a radio and rushes towards it. However, when they turn up the volume, they hear fearful screams of people shooting at zombies amidst a lot of confusion. There is no certainty of what is going to happen next, but Jason is only concerned because his camera is starting to run out of juice. The team goes ahead to an operation room, hoping to find a charging spot for the camera. There, they find a zombie that slowly moves towards them, medicine smelly like a doctor. Romeo tries to kill it with his gun, but body shots don't seem to do the trick. Romeo eventually aims for the head and succeeds in putting down the zombie. The danger isn't over, as a nurse zombie also shows up after that. 
Deb tries to kill the zombie with a shock machine, and she manages to fry her eyeballs at first, but the zombie still manages to get back up, so Romeo has to shoot her down for good. The teen wants to go look for help so that they can heal the driver, but Jason isn't willing to leave his camera alone. He waits next to his camera while it charges. Suddenly, the driver wakes up, but then, Jason hears a gunshot, and Deb screams loudly. Luckily, Deb comes back to Jason, and she has now found a camera herself. She mocks Jason by pointing the camera at him and giving him a taste of his own medicine. Deb records Jason and scolds him for being so dependent on a stupid camera. Then, she explains how she barely escaped the attack from a patient zombie, which was why she had screamed. In the middle of her lecture, Deb gets scared when she sees another patient turning into a zombie, and then Romeo arrives to kill it with his gun. Unfortunately, the driver dies and also turns into a zombie who wants to try driving without a zombie license. Romeo is unable to shoot her, so the professor does the job for him. Things get worse later when Romeo gets bitten by a zombie and Nerd tries to kill it with an IV rod. Nerd stabs the zombie through the heart multiple times, but it doesn't work, so he eventually kills it by poking the head. Unfortunately, Romeo is poisoned beyond cure, and he dies soon after. The next day, Stud wants to shoot Romeo in the head before he turns into a zombie, but Blondie wants to wait for now. Eventually, she has to be the one to put Romeo out of his misery when he becomes a zombie. Time passes by, and the zombie invasion starts taking over all the major cities. It causes all kinds of mass violence and riots, so the team sticks to the country roads. One day, their van breaks down, and they run into an old deaf man who communicates in writing. The team says they want to use his barn to repair their van, but the old man tells them to hurry because some zombies are coming near them. The old man acts fast and kills the zombies with his dynamite, after which the team goes inside his barn. There, they come across a video that shows a birthday party taken over by a clown zombie. Things get worse later when the team sees an army of zombies trying to break into the barn. The old man instructs everyone to go out through the back door, but they find a few zombies over there as well. One zombie attacks Blondie while she is fixing the van, but the old man saves her in time. Now Blondie finally fixes the car, and the team makes their escape after opening the barn door. Unfortunately, the old man is bitten by a zombie, so he kills the zombie with a sickle and also ends his blind life. The team gets away from the horde, and more time passes by as the invasion takes over multiple countries across the world. The team reaches a new town, but bumps into a baldy with a bald shotgun. Baldy has his gang with him, so both teams get into an agreement. Everyone gets together, and they go to Baldy's warehouse, where there are tons of supplies. Baldy explains that he's part of the National Guard, and the team learns that the whole narrative being fed to them by the media was a lie, because nobody ever had the virus under control. Jason goes to upload his video on the internet, and gets thousands of views within minutes. However, this upsets Deb, for he only prioritizes his work, rather than her hormones. Jason argues that he's helping people around the world understand how to deal with the apocalypse. Suddenly, Deb gets a message from her brother and learns that her family is still alive. Even the mummy contacts Jason to tell him he's having a blast at his mansion and the team should come over. However, Baldi says one of his men died from a heart attack and cannot be found anywhere. Now Jason loses his way inside the warehouse and a tense sequence follows. He gets scared by his own reflection, but is rescued by Stud soon after. Now that everyone is together again, Baldi asks the humans to shut up so that they can locate the zombie. Baldi and his men kill a suspected zombie, but they get it wrong, and the actual zombie attacks Stud. Baldi breaks some acid on the zombie's hairy head, and it manages to kill the hairy zombie slowly. Now, the team asks for some support, but Baldi doesn't want to share his supplies with them. Deb manages to convince him to give in to her demands, and she is complimented for being resilient. The team leaves Baldi's warehouse, and then they check out some more videos online. A woman in Japan warns everyone that the virus has reached her country as well, but then the video gets scrambled because the internet servers have started to fail. The team finally reaches Deb's home, but no one answers the door, so Deb decides to stay there and advises the others to leave for their own homes. Jason doesn't seem to mind leaving his annoying girlfriend alone, but the others decide to stay with her. The team enters Deb's house, but they trigger the alarm, so they have to go to the garage for the controls. There, they find a broken-down car covered with blood and fear the worst. Deb tries to be brave, but gets the shock of her life when her zombie brother attacks her. She also finds her zombie mom eating the remains of her dad, including his smelly part. The professor kills both the zombies, and the team decides to get out. Deb is completely non-responsive to Jason, who only cares about his camera now. She thanks the professor for saving her life, and then he talks about his own home back in England. Then, Jason reveals that he spoke to the mummy, and he had invited everyone to his mansion in Philadelphia. 
That's when some army soldiers show up and enter the van. However, the soldiers turn out to be villains and steal all the supplies that the team had collected throughout their journey. Now, the team is only left with their weapons to defend themselves. Jason checks out some more footage and sees a clip where some guards invade an old couple's room. One man gets attacked by a zombie, so they kill all the zombies along with the old couple. Later, the team reaches the mummy's house, but they find the door open. They find security cameras everywhere and check out the place, but they can't find anyone inside. When the team enters the library, the professor becomes happy because he likes all the books there. Suddenly, the secret door opens up and the mummy comes out of it. He reveals that this is the panic room where he can check video surveillance, but he also seems to be hiding something from the others. Jason gives the extra camera to Stud, after which the mummy looks for some food. Stud confronts the mummy for acting weird, and the mummy finally confesses that everyone else is dead over there. Deb and Stud follow him to his backyard, and he shows them that he's buried the zombies in a pool. The mummy walks away, but they learn that he has also been bitten. He slowly turns into a zombie and attacks Blondie who is outside with Jason. Despite the danger, Jason doesn't help her and simply records the chase scene. He distracts the mummy zombie and allows Blondie to knock it out, but not before he exposes her curvy figure to the camera. Blondie has had enough of this, so she takes the van and drives away. Meanwhile, the mummy zombie attacks Nerd, who is drying his hair in the bathroom, causing him to die of an electrical shock in the bathtub. The professor witnesses this and leads the survivors to the panic room so that they can be safe. The professor acquits himself with a sword, and Deb suggests locking themselves inside, but Jason is against the idea. He gets into an argument with his girlfriend and eventually abandons the team. Jason's madness finally gets the better of him when he is attacked by the mummy zombie. The professor arrives and kills the mummy zombie with his sword, but it's too late for Jason as he has been bitten. With no other choice, Deb has to kill her boyfriend for good, ending his camera life. This severely affects her, so she decides to finish what Jason had started. The survivors live out their lives inside the panic room and lock themselves in after noticing tons of zombies outside. The movie ends with a clip of some hunters shooting zombies just for target practice. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.